Uh, our next presenter uh, will be Dr. Vasim Haydar, I think, from Comsat University, Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, yeah, uh, and he will talk about data science for bioinformatics and genome sequencing. Okay, uh, please welcome Dr. Vasim Haydar. Thank you. I guess my screens, um, everyone can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Aula. Hi. Hello. Um, this is uh, Dr. Wasim, Wasim Heather. I'm an assistant professor at Computational Biology and Bioinformatics Group, Department of Biosciences, Comsets University, Islamabad. And we do have a small uh, data analysis company um, that helps with this NGS, what we call next generation sequencing data analysis. And we are also exploring and learning the possibility of embedding this artificial intelligence and uh, data science specifically. So when I came to know about this conference, I was very excited. And then, uh, you know, the email was forwarded to us from our uh, executive director, Dr. Zadi, and I was very excited that I would love to, you know, interact and, you know, learn a lot many things from you guys. Wonderful. Uh, it's going great. I'm really enjoying that. Comsat says, uh, Comsat stands for Commission on Science and Technology for Sustainable Development in the South. And in 1994, representatives from several countries, developing countries, actually, you know, the Southern Hemisphere, uh, we are not that rich and we are, you know, um, underdeveloping. So that's why uh, uh, many, uh, you know, countries get together in this consortium and, you know, not many countries are there, about 40, I believe. The headquarters in, in, in Islamabad, Pakistan. And Comsets decided to, you know, start with a university. The idea was to, you know, um, start a, a center of excellence in information technology. So that's why they came up with the, initially it was Comsets Institute of Information Technology, uh, which has now transformed into Comsets University Islamabad. And now uh, we have, um, how many, like seven regular campuses and one virtual campuses. So total eight campuses we have. So I belong to Islamabad campus. So that was established in 1998. And in this talk, I do want to uh, give you a generic uh, general talk about the sequencing and, you know, a little bit about next generation sequencing and my interest and the areas where uh, we can, uh, we can help each other or collaborate uh, with each other. Uh, my brief, uh, background. I did my PhD from UIUC, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, USA, uh, whereas I was involved in uh, next generation sequencing uh, experiments. Uh, um, my data was from an rna sick based experiment. We uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. And I also did a master's. Before going for my PhD, I had to, uh, a dual specialization. So originally I'm a biologist, so I had a MSc degree and uh, Amphil degree from Pakistan's topmost university, Kaidi Azam University. And then um, I did a master's degree in computer science as well, uh, so that I should, you know, uh, proceed well in my bioinformatics curriculum. Uh, my research interests are high throughput sequencing data analysis. I do some uh, statistical and computational genomics, um, some applied statistics. I have seen some a wonderful presentation um, uh, from the people in epidemiology as well. So over there, I was also excited. So we have, sometimes I see a data like this where I help the people and do, you know, those statistical tests. A little bit about software development and, you know, a little bit about web development. So let's talk about the um, human body. Uh, let's talk about the subject and uh, let me briefly give you an overview about the the, uh, the cells and the chromosomes. So everyone knows that we are all made up of uh, various tissues, right? And these tissues are made up of uh, what we call the cells. Cells are the um, unit of structure and function of living bodies, right? So these individual units here, these are the cells. And when we go into the cells, we zoom in, we see that the cell has, um, you know, two important components. So one of them is the nucleus and the one of them is the cytoplasm, this, this liquid thing outside and there is a membrane, right? So the cell has nucleus. Nucleus is the central uh, most important part. 
and this nucleus contains DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, uh, which is the genetic material. So that DNA controls all our life. Um, I can say this DNA is the program or the code of the life. It is made up of these uh, these uh, alphabets or characters, ATGCs. Four of them are there, and then they get together and then they make our DNA. And then DNA is packed into uh, these packets or bundles. Uh, we call them chromosomes. How many of them are here? Uh, in human, every cell within the nucleus contains uh, these uh, twenty. Uh, three, um, I would say 24, because we separate this X and Y, but in fact, uh, they classify it as 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we have everything same in the in the males, like, but except this tiny lead, little thing, sorry boys, that makes you different. So that is X and Y chromosome in the males. Rest of the things are the same. And in the female, it's both these X and there is another X chromosome. So total 23 pairs of chromosomes or packets or bundles of DNA, we call them. Uh, they are there in every uh, human in, uh, individual. And uh, these chromosomes are made up of, uh, I'm wanting to take you a little bit towards chemistry, but um, ignore guys if it is hard for you because mostly I think people are computer scientists or electrical engineers here. A data scientist, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah, so this uh, DNA is made up of uh, these alphabets A, G, C, T, and U. So, four of them are here. So, let me define this DNA in your language. So, DNA uh, is a string of any size N that is derived from these alphabets A, C, G, and T. If you want to look about their composition, they look like this these chemical structures. You find it hard, ignore them. So we have these alphabets in our book of life. So in fact, I'm explaining your book of life, right? So these 23 chromosomes, I defined, these are the chapters in it, right? Chapters in it. So uh, these four alphabets, they write our, our fate. So they are there in our book of life, right? So Watson and Craig, these were the scientists. They discovered the structure of this, uh, this molecule DNA and uh, they believe that this DNA is a double stranded entity. So the strands are, uh, they run anti parallel with each other. So uh, it goes like G, T, C. I'm not focusing or concentrating here just to tell you like this DNA is a double stranded entity. So we have those alphabets and they go like G, T, C, G, T, A. And then we have another strand uh, shown as a, as a red ribbon, one strand and the other ribbon, uh, green ribbon represents the other strand. So it's a double stranded entity. Ignore that if you are finding it hard. So here we are. Finally, uh, we get this sequence. So this DNA is nothing but an interplay of these alphabets, four characters, A, T, G, and C. And the objective of DNA sequencing is right to find out, you know, what is the sequence of this DNA in our genome, in our chromosomes, right? So that thing is called as DNA sequencing. So the objective is like we can find out how many of them are there and they are there in, in which, uh, uh, you know, order or series, okay? So uh, total in human, there are 3 billion of them, 3 billion, yeah, it's a big number. So 3 billion of them are there, ATGCs. Alphabets are the uh, coming from the same set. Four alphabets, ATGCs, and how many of them are here in each individual? Three billion, right? And then these three billion, they are arranged like this in order. So that's our code, organic code. So basically for you, computational scientists, it's a string made up of, you know, four letters. Of, I can say quadruple. In the computers, your code is made up of 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 binary string, zeros and ones, bits, right, bits. And here we have those, something that is uh, coming from a set of four things, I can call it quadruple, I think I can call it, so yeah, quadruple. So this is the DNA string, right? And most of our tasks are processing these strings, right? So we process these strings a lot in our life, yeah? And for, in order to get this sequencing thing out, they develop uh, lovely machines. They call them as next generation sequencers. So previously when they tried, uh, they had the sequencers, but after this, you know, human genome project, you might have heard of it, where they sequence the complete human genome. And they tell us that there are 3 billion nucleotides in it. 
so in each which order they are uh, what they make and how they interact you know and how they influence our life that's what we are doing okay so these sequences next generation sequences they came out after this human genome project and they were they were pretty advanced and lovely machines i would just highlight one of them of this small usb size so you can put your blood or you know saliva or anything over here you know you load your sample and it will sequence your whole genome and you know you can have all those you know nucleotides in front of you and then within that you can go and zoom in and you know see for their functional units we call them genes how do, do these genes influence your life and interplay in your life how can we you know detect the genes uh, which are which are not correct and they might cause us some diseases everything all about if this all is about this uh, sequencing thing and that's all this bioinformatics is all about uh, this this usb thing was developed by oxford university in the technology got famous as oxford nanogore i just highlighting this one i'm not talking about all these machines and their principles so this one is uh, pretty fancy. So you can take this strand of the DNA over there. They made those uh, the, these proteins that are, you know, these membrane-like things in them, and DNA can pass as a single unit. And over here, there's an adapter thing that is having some electrical signals. And when these ATGCs they pass, and you know, they touch this thing, or when they pass it, in it's nearby area, they change the polarity of these electric current and then you can detect that which nucleotide has passed so in this way you can sequence it real quick okay uh, since this dna is really big thing this genome is big thing like 3.2 billion in humans so all these nucleotides you cannot do it all of them all together so you need to break it into short fragments so somebody look at it like these fragments as a fire of a shotgun so we call it as a shotgun method so you break this dna our genome into short fragments and then you sequence them when you sequence them you get you know a lot of fragments in front of you now here comes your your uh, computer science here comes your ai data science those techniques so you put them together like a pieces of a jigsaw puzzle right and that is the objective of this bioinformatics so just to put everything which so far we have covered so we have the tissues we have the cells we have the dna in them and we have these fancy machines, the sequencers, so that sequence then, and finally the data lies in front of you, and that's our job to deal with it. Okay, so reading this book of life is tough, right? So this was the message that comes, I, I just took it, the example from one of the papers, so he cited Charles Dickens, um, a Tale of Two Cities, and this, uh, you know, passage was beautiful in explaining the, the complexity of our problem. So that was the message that was there, it was the best of the times, it was the worst of the times, it was the age of wisdom. In fact, he was comparing two cities, I guess, France and London during World War. So he's comparing, you know, one side doing well and one side doing bad. And this was the text that we had. And for example, we are trying to, you know, treat this thing or, you know, understand this DNA example with this example. And when you look at it as a DNA, it becomes like this. Okay, so there are no commas or full stops or, you know, carriage returns, the hidden characters that are actually present in the shape of characters itself in this DNA thing. So, you know, this is the problem that lies in front of us. We need to read this message, but, and actual message is like this, but this is the way it is presented to us. So when we do this sequencing, it becomes like this, ugly, right? So you need to put it back and get this message out of it. So you can understand the complexity of the problem. So that's what the sequencing is. And when once you get those sequencing thing done, then obviously we need to rely on the heavy computers, big machines to, you know, put the things, these pieces back of this mixer puzzle, obviously 3.4 billion, and you break it into the fragments of size 100. So how many, like you have millions of the fragments that lie in front of you, you need to put them back. So bioinformatics is, uh, let me define informatics, deals with the information management and processing using techniques from mathematics, stats, computer science, engineering, and processing the biological information with the similar, we may call it as bioinformatics. Some people say it's the marriage between biology and computers, computer science. 
right? Uh, I already talked about it. You get the fragments, you put them back. So let me briefly, very briefly look into uh, Professor, um, uh, uh, please keep me telling like when, when I have like uh, five minutes left or, you know, keep, keep warning, warming me. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, so tasks mostly performed in bioinformatics. Uh, we have those sequences. We need to put them back. This thing is called as genome assembly, genome assembly, like solving a jigsaw puzzle from, from various bits and pieces. Okay. Gene prediction. So now you have a sequence that lies in front of you. Um, uh, let me um, draw something over here. So this whole DNA string is there, but at some places it is active or it does some play some role, right? So these pieces are important to connect it, but some of the areas which are hotspot and important, we call them as genes, genes, okay? So all three billion is not the genes, but genes are some of the areas that are important and then they make the functional product. So they play their roles. Like you have the, the rails of some railway and your stations on that railway's uh, track is, is your genes, right? So in gene prediction, we actually look for, you have assembled a genome or a chromosome, and now in gene prediction, you look for certain patterns uh, within that. So pattern finding, right? So this was the whole sequence, you found some pattern. And then with the help of these patterns, patterns are, you know, the words, the words, this word is, for example, of size six, this word is also size six, size three, size three. So various words are defined of different size. They are coming from all these four alphabets, A, T, G, and Cs, right? So we sequence them and now we find these uh, important patterns. So this pattern finding is also an important thing in bioinformatics. So we do this pattern finding a lot, right? Especially while we are finding those genes. Uh, sometimes we are comparing the sequences with each other, like my genome with your genome, the African genome versus European genome versus American genome. So these kind of things are comparing the sequences. That's what we do a lot in bioinformatics, sequence comparison. Uh, central dogma of life is a concept in biology that is very important. So according to this, the DNA makes another entity. Obviously this original code stays there within the nucleus, but it makes another entity, which we call it as RNA, and then the functional entity, which we actually see in our bodies, like my hair, my skin, my flesh, my, you know, the enzyme that are digesting my food, they are all proteins, protein. But in our language, in bioinformatics or computing, these are just, uh, you know, sequences, the strings. DNA is a string made up of A, C, G, and T. RNA is a similar string that is exactly copy of this. So that is made like A, C, G, and U. Only one nucleotide or one bit is chained here. That's too important for the enzymes to recognize this. Okay. And protein is a string that's coming from 20 alphabets, 20 alphabets, and these alphabets are there. I'm not going into the details of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in gene expression studies, we study about the genes and how do they express. So genes make RNA, right? This gene A makes the RNA copies. So how many copies are here? These green arrows represents the RNA produced by gene A, blue ones by B and C produces that much amount of the RNA. This thing is called as the gene expression. So when gene expresses, it produces the RNA, right? And here we count these, these occurrences, these molecules actually with these techniques, right? And finally, we end up with a matrix having numbers like this. So for example, this gene has, uh, we had an experiment. So we get like a wild type group here. We get a mutant type group here, two groups. And we did it in three replicates. And uh, this is the number of the uh, RNA copies we produced from them on both sides, right? So on this side, you see that the expression is higher and on this side, the expression is lower. So this thing is called as differential gene expression. So we check that and we do that in case of this um, RNA expression studies. So over here, our data is all numerical numbers. So we play with the numbers. Here, we are interested to, you know, 
develop some system or something where we can give a gene expression profile of some gene and then you can tell us with your AI techniques that whether it's having the expression as higher or lower, whether it's, it's, it will cause a disease or not, something like that. So this thing is the gene expression problem. Sometimes we take the sequences and uh, we align them or we you know, put them together and we make their trees, phylogenetic trees. So that's also important. Uh, determining 3D structures from sequences, it's very, very difficult, computationally difficult task, right? These proteins actually make up these structures like this. And these structures are same as, you know, on the computers, this job is similar to this, uh, you know, this image processing thing which you guys was, were, were doing about those x-rays or, you know, all those other image processing techniques. So this is the big problem for us to find the 3D structures um, using these, uh, these image processing techniques. So that's the area where I guess you guys can also play a role. Um, what role bioinformatics plays in, in COVID-19 scenario? It has given the spotlight. Uh, first bioinformatics uh, breakthrough was sequencing of the coronavirus genome coming from China. And like, you know, we have like thousands of the genomes sequenced all across the world. The crystal structure of this protein was determined. So that's been used to make these, these drugs. So people are working on that. This RT-PCR, the PCR test polymerase chain reaction was actually created using bioinformatics sequence alignment methods. And role of data science, uh, bioinformatics, we also need Linux and shell scripting a lot. Programming skills, obviously in Python and SQL, I do R and I love R and do a lot of R. I'm learning Python nowadays. And obviously, you know, everybody needs this thing, AI and ML. So we are exploring that. Uh, where this ML can be helpful in our work, prediction of genomic features, prediction of genes, okay? Then prediction of DNA, RNA, and proteins. Uh, this clustering methods, we use them a lot. And I have a couple of examples from one of my work like PCAs and you know, dimensional scaling techniques. Coursera uh, is a very, very famous place where they're offering the courses. And I've just seen a course, Data Science for Bioinformatics and Genome Sequencing. If anyone is interested, you can do it, right? Uh, in our work, we took a uh, gene Excuse expression. Excuse me, uh, yeah, we are running out of time. Uh, yeah. So one minute. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so this is our work. We applied these techniques, a big cancer data set we took, and we did this clustering, and we see like the similar uh, cancer types, they clustered together, and this is also there reflected in their gene expression behavior. So we classify the genes uh, which are expressed together with the help of these uh, k-means clustering things in this diagram. And that's where we are exploring and using these things. Uh, we also have a, a, a training uh, programs, which we do that most often here at Comsets. And yeah, so we have trained over 500 people so far from Pakistan mainly, but some of the foreign students, they also showed up. Uh, we do have a, a lovely bioinformatics lab. So this is our team. Uh, on the left side, this is me, uh, Horam, and other colleagues. Uh, we are uh, working on genomics and this transcriptomics, and we have another three colleagues that are working on proteins, proteomics. Uh, we have some international students, guys. So some of the lovely Nigerian students, Aliyu just did MS with me, um, Akogo, uh, was not from Nigeria, I guess, uh, some other country, uh, Ghana maybe, and uh, we had celebrated the Christmas with, uh, for a go-go. Enoch uh, was also a Nigerian. Uh, this lady was from, from US. So Islamabad is a lovely city. Uh, we have uh, Tivas funded masters and uh, PhD students. Um, a couple of postdocs also showed up there. So if you have any questions, concerns or queries, uh, you may contact me. I will post my email over there. Thank you so much. Any questions, please let me know.